There are many types of cancers that plague children, ranging from acute lymphocytic leukemia, or ALL, neuroblastoma, testicular germ cell tumors, bone tumors, Hodgkin lymphoma, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and many others, but my research project is going to specifically focus on brain and central nervous system, or CNS, tumors, which are the second most common type of cancer. Now, astrocytoma is the most common type of brain and CNS tumor, accounting for approximately 35% of all childhood CNS cancers. Researchers estimate the incidence rate of astrocytoma to be around 14 per million children under the age of 15 in the U.S. Although the five-year survival rate for low-grade astrocytomas are as high as 95 to 100 percent, the five-year survival rate for high-grade astrocytomas is only about 15 to 30 percent. The peak incidence of astrocytoma is in children between the age of five and nine years. And unfortunately, very little is known about the etiology of and risk factors for pediatric astrocytoma. Recent evidence suggests that a low APGAR score may be correlated with a higher risk of developing brain cancer in children. Therefore, my research proposal seeks to specifically study the incidence of astrocytoma in children with a low APGAR score as compared to those with higher APGAR score. The APGAR is a quick assessment of newborns that gives an overall picture of how the baby is doing at 1 and 5 minutes after birth. An APGAR score is composed of five categories, heart rate, respiratory effort, muscle tone, reflex irritability, and color. The maximum score is 10 points, with 10 representing the healthiest state possible for a newborn. Studies have shown that low APGAR scores are linked with increased risks of neonatal deaths and various other complications and disorders. Low APGAR scores have also been linked with elevated risk of epilepsy, an increased proportion of leukemias and ALLs, and an elevated risk of developing a malignant neoplasm of the CNS. Finally, one study found that those with low APGAR score in asphyxia had higher risks of developing childhood brain tumors. Therefore, I propose to extend the initial research in the following manner. I will recruit 160 incident histologically confirmed cases of pediatric astrocytoma from four children's hospitals in Northern California using single-stage cluster sampling. There will be 40 subjects with astrocytoma from each hospital. I will recruit 320 controls to be randomly selected among those admitted to the same hospital during the same period. Random selection will occur via a computer program that will compile a randomly ordered list of hospitals' patients and then select every 10th patient to be asked to participate in the study. Controls will be matched for age, gender, and race, and informed consent will be obtained. APGAR scores will be obtained from children's medical records. I will stratify APGAR scores into three categories, 0 to 4 for low, 5 to 7 for mid-range, and 8 to 10 for high. I will also assess amount of exposure to radiation as this may interact with APGAR score. Exposure to radiation will be measured through three methods. One, a parent rated questionnaire about the child's history of radiation exposure. Two, the child's medical history of x-ray and CT scans. And three, a current measure of radiation level using Geiger counters. I will work with a biostatistician to analyze the data. The study will take two years in total. Phase one, set up for one month. Phase two, recruiting for 18 months. Phase 3, collecting APGAR score and radiation exposure for 3 months, and Phase 4, analyzing data and completing write-up for 2 months. I estimate my study to cost a total of $266,200. Information from my study may lead to a better understanding of the risk factors for astrocytoma and thus may help with future treatment.